Welcome to Blossoming by Grace and Grit. This is message 516. The name of our message today, Be the Light in This Dark World. But first, let us pray. Matthew 5, 16 says, Let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Father God, thank you so much, my Father, for your love, your forgiveness. Thank you so much for who you are, your presence. Thank you, my Father, for you are the one that brings truth and light to our lives. Because without you, my Father, our heart would be dark. Without you in the world, my Father, this world would be incredibly dark. We would be wicked and we would go back to the same, to the same society. The same people that were doing very dark deeds before the flood, before Noah built his ark. You had to redo the world. You had to clean the slate. You had to abolish humanity and start over again, my father, because the wickedness was so intense. My father, where would we be if we, would, if we didn't have you? My Lord God, thank you so much for helping us to be the light in this world. Help us to, to be honest and to be sincere and to be people that light emanates from our heart. My Lord, that when we say to someone, I wanna make the difference in your life, that implies you can trust me. I want to be different in your life. And yet, if we do something dishonest, if we do something that indicates that we cannot be trusted, then we are just saying words. If we give an indication to someone that we are just like everybody else, that we cannot be trusted. And above all, if we say that we are a Christian and that we believe in God and that we love God, then we are giving the wrong testimony. We are giving an impression that we don't have God or that we don't really love God because when we have God in our hearts, when we love God, we want to be honest. We want to be real and vulnerable because we know that being deceptive, lying, all of those things are against God. They go against the kingdom of God. And so let your light shine is going through life, allowing the light of Christ, the truth of Christ, the sincerity of Christ, the integrity of Christ, the honesty of Christ. Let that light shine in this dark world. We have to be the difference. We have to be the people that are following Christ and are doing things totally different from what the world does. We are making the difference. We are making the difference because we have Christ. Lord, I just want to thank you because when you entered my life, I started doing everything different. I wanted to be different. I made it a point to do things in a way that I wasn't even used to doing them, in a way that would honor you. I pray, Lord God, this morning 
that everything that we say and everything that we do will honor you. Even when you think or when I think or when anyone thinks that anybody is looking or anybody is watching us on the contrary if no one is watching that is when we have to be the most honest and the most light and the most high integrity people because you are watching lord god because you see what we do in the dark so lord thank you so much my father for helping us be those people that are the light in this dark world. You are the presence. You are the light. You are the truth. My Father, may everything that we do, do it out of love. First, love for you, and then love for others. That they may see the light in us and say that person is walking with God. May we be those people that when we say something we can back it up with our actions. May we be those people then that when we say I want to make the difference in your life we don't turn around and deceive. We don't turn around and do something to create distrust. May we be the light, Lord, in this dark world. In Jesus' name, amen. Light in the darkness. Even a small flickering candle can dispel darkness in a pitched black room. Though a candle's flame may be insignificant compared to a high wattage halogen bulb, it can still pierce the darkness, providing light and warmth. Matthew 5 is the start of the Sermon on the Mount, where Jesus established the ethics and principles for kingdom living. He, like Moses in the book of Exodus, goes up a mountain to receive a new body of instructions and deliver it to the people of God. Jesus gathered the crowds around him and called them to radical discipleship. Jesus says that his followers are the salt of the earth, even the light of the world, Matthew 5, 13 through 14. These two metaphors help explain how God's presence within his children can influence and transform the world. Once salt is added to the food, it cannot be removed. Salt's distinct flavor permeates the food, and even when you can't see the grains of salt anymore, you can certainly taste its effect. The same effect can be produced by a lamp. It radiates and it can be seen from great distances, illuminating anything within sight. We are to be salt and light. As the salt of the earth, we are called to season the society we live in so that when others meet us, they not only sense God's presence within us, but also get a taste of God's kingdom on earth. As the light of the world, we are called to display dissipate the darkness around us. God's illuminating presence within us can point others to Jesus, who is the ultimate light of the world. John 8, 12. How are we doing? How are we being salt and light? In what specific ways are we behaving or what are we doing for others to see Jesus in us? Personally, for me, it is important when a person says, I believe in God, I am going to church, I am following God. There is a certain way that these people are supposed to behave. There is a certain way that the Christ in you will produce a character out of you. And when I feel that a person might be deceiving me, then I just walk away because 
who wants a deceiver in their lives? Truly. And so that is how I know if a person is walking with Christ or not. The Bible says in Matthew 7, verse 15 through 20, that you will know them by their fruit. And that means that you will get to know someone by the people they hang around with, by the mistakes that they've done, even though we're not judging anyone because anybody can make a mistake, but you will know them by their fruit. How have they conducted their lives? What are they saying? Are they backing it up with action? Are they backing up their words with true actions that have integrity and honesty? You will know them by their fruit. Are they light? Are they light in this world? Are they doing things differently? What type of decisions are they making after saying that they know Christ and they're following Christ? My friends, anybody can say, I believe in God. Anybody can say, I am following Christ. But when we are true disciples of God, the fruit is evident. We will talk different. We will think different. We will behave different. It is inevitable. Because once you receive Christ as your Lord and Savior, the Holy Spirit comes to live in our, in our world, in our life, in our body. We become the temple of the Holy Spirit and he starts transforming us from the inside out. Now the question is, are we allowing him to transform us? Are we allowing him to make the difference in our lives? Because if we don't allow him, our fruit will continue to be bitter. It will continue to be deceit, dishonesty, lying. When our fruit is sweet, everybody wants to smell it. Everybody wants to receive the aroma of our fruit. Everyone wants to be around us because we have Christ in our lives. And the aroma of Christ is something that you cannot deny. The light of Christ you cannot deny. And so, it is better not to say that you're following Christ until you can see and until you can show the real evidence of your relationship with Christ. I encourage you to take a second look and always when you need to know who someone is, follow the premise. You will know them by their fruit. And that is how we are light in this dark world. That is how people can truly see that we have Jesus in our hearts. Thank you, Father God, for this lovely word, my Father, this day, my God, we praise you, we thank you, and we, we just love you, God, for being in our lives. We love you for making the difference. You truly do make the difference, my Father. You are the one that makes the difference, my Father. It is sad when someone says to you, I want to make the difference. And then they lie or deceit. My God, you're not that way. You are not a man that you would lie. You are the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. You are not a God that will sleep or slumber. You will not leave us abandoned. You will not leave us with that impression. One more person that is not speaking the truth. One more person that is not real. My Father, you are real. You are the only one that can make a true difference in a person's life. You are the only one that comes in, my Father, 
You clean up our mess. You clean us up. You transform us. You clothe us with white garments of linen. You make us royal priesthood, a holy nation, my God. My Lord God, you are the only one that does make the difference in our dark world. Thank you for your light. Thank you for your truth. In Jesus' name. My friend, I encourage you to play in the light, play in the sunshine, and dance in the rain. And remember to keep on smiling. We have so many different reasons to be thankful. And thankfulness and gratefulness will reflect in your face as a beautiful smile. So remember, God loves you so very much. Until we meet again, have a beautiful day. This is a prayer to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Father God, thank you so much, my Lord, for Jesus. Thank you so much that I realize that I am a sinner and that I need a Savior, God. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for the precious blood that was shed on the cross at Calvary for me, for my sins. Lord Jesus, I ask you forgiveness for every one of my sins. I ask you, Lord Jesus, to come into my life and be my Lord and Savior. I give you my word that from this day forward, I will follow you. I will read the word, I will go to church, and I will spend time with you, Lord Jesus. I want to get to know you more. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for making something of my life that is worthwhile, something wonderful. Thank you, Lord, for accepting me as your son, as your daughter, into the kingdom of God. Thank you, Lord, for your love, for your great grace, in your name I pray, Lord Jesus. Thank you for receiving me today. Amen. My friend, if you have made this prayer, if you have said this prayer, I congratulate you for because today there is a celebration in heaven. The Bible says that when one sinner repents, there is a celebration. In other words, there is a party in the kingdom of God. And so I congratulate you because it is the absolute best decision that you will ever make or have ever made in your life. Many blessings to you and to your family. In Jesus' name, amen.